Welcome back to the Gun Dungeon. Back here for another reloading and rambling. I don't know if y'all enjoy these or not, but I do a lot of reloading and it gives me an excuse to sit here and yap while I do it. So I'll probably continue to do these as long as y'all like watching them and give me feedback in the comments, all that good stuff. But today I'm sitting here reloading the actual topic and what I would like to discuss today. And that is 300 blackout cartridge. This is a 200 grain Sierra Game King. This is a subsonic load. This one, I wanna say it's going right, right a little over a thousand feet per second with some little gun here. But you know, this is one of those cartridges that a lot of people really like to hate on. I think I mentioned this uh, earlier reloading and rambling and I've never really understood it it's it's kind of the same thing that happens a lot in the gun community when something new comes out which granted this isn't that new of a cartridge anymore but I remember when it first came out it was all the rage and then all of a sudden everybody hated it and I, I don't understand why uh oh we got something going on here I don't understand why exactly because it's a very versatile cartridge, in my opinion. I don't know many other cartridges, especially AR platform cartridges, that you can load everything from, you know, 90, 100 grain, 110 grain bullets, doing supersonic speeds, 23, 2400 feet per second, which isn't shabby. That's not a shabby cartridge. I know I can get close to 2400 feet per second from a 16 inch barrel with a 125 grain Hornady SST. You know, that's that's a pretty effective deer cartridge in my opinion. I know my daughter has used this cartridge very successfully throughout her hunting career. And uh, she's used the 110 grain Hornady GMX, which now the new version of that is the CX, I believe. I have some of those as well. I'm probably going to put, do a gel test, putting the 110 grain uh, Hornady CX, which is the all copper monolithic bullet, up against the Barnes. I want to say it's the TAC, TAC TX, I think, because it's the tipped version. So it'd be TX. And just see how they do side by side in comparison with the exact same powder charges, exact same everything except bullet. So I'm curious myself. I'm probably gonna do that. But then you can load 150 grain 308 bullets. You can load 168 grain. You can load 180 grain. Now when you start getting 180, 200 grain, you're talking more subsonic loads. 220 grain bullets. I mean, you can go everything from 2,400 feet per second to 900 feet per second with a 220 grain bullet, and you're essentially talking 45 ACP ballistics at that point. But, you know, for somebody that wants to run a suppressor and run something subsonic, very, very quiet, 220 grain, 200 grain bullet, it's not anything to sneeze at either. I know Hornady makes that 190 grain uh, sub X which I would like to get those bullets myself and do some reloading with them. Cause I bought a box of those and I feel like I could hand load what I would prefer better than what the factory ammunition was giving me. But that's neither here nor there. But you know, this, this little cartridge doesn't take a whole lot of powder. I do not, don't swear to it, but I think like a max charge uh, for 120 or 125 grain bullet to get that 2400 feet per second. I want to say it's only like 21 grains of little gun. So you're talking, you know, not a whole lot of powder expenditure here for a very effective deer cartridge within 150, 200 yards. I wouldn't go much further than that with it. But, you know, 308, you're talking quite a bit more powder, probably four times, well, not four times, at least, at least two and two times as much powder. 30 out six, you're talking almost three times as much powder and same diameter bullets. The bullets for in 308 are plentiful. 
all kinds of bullets out there for, you know, reloading something in 30 cal. And you know, the, the ballistics of this, this cartridge, when we're talking 124 grain bullets, they're not far off from 7.62 by 3.9. And everybody knows that I'm a big fan of 7.62 by 3.9. I think a lot of people are, but then they turn around and hate on 300 blackout. And the ballistics are very, very similar. And it's not a extreme tapered case like the 7.62 by 3.9. So it runs standard AR-15 magazines. You don't have to have the big banana shaped magazines that 7.62 by 3.9 does in an AR-15 platform. So I don't know what what's to, what's not to love about it, honestly. If you want a little heavier bullet in your AR-15 platform, I don't see a problem with it. Like I said, my daughter's been deer hunting with it since she was eight or nine years old. And I've yet to, to see a, a failure from an ammunition standpoint with her taking game. Matter of fact, I'll say this, the last deer she shot with it, which was the GMX bullet, 110 grainer, max charge little gun, it's scooting, hand load of course, uh, it had a much better exit wound, much better blood trail than what I got out of the deer that I killed the same year with the 50 Beowulf. Now, is that saying that it's more powerful than 50 Beowulf? Absolutely not, but it's just two different ideologies. 50 Beowulf, at least my loads out of my 16 inch barrel is a 300 grain bullet going roughly 1950, pushing 2000 feet per second mark. So it's working more with mass and momentum to do your damage. Whereas the 110 grain GMX bullets working on velocity and expansion. But I will say at the exact same distances, cause we shot those deer at the exact same place. Matter of fact, I believe we double teamed that day. And it was, I think it was the same day, I believe. Eh, don't quote me on that. But uh, exact same distance, exact same place. And the 300 blackout dropped that one dead in its tracks. Pretty well same bullet location, double lung shot. Whereas the 50 Beowulf had a very, very small exit hole and the deer ran about 40 yards. So, just saying, that anecdotal evidence, I know, I'm not saying that that right there is the end all be all, use 300 blackout over 50 Beowulf, I'm not saying that at all, because I guarantee if you had a quartering shot, the Beowulf's going to give you an exit hole, whereas the 300 blackout may not. But you know, those copper bullets, they do really, really well for expansion. And I would even go so far as to say that within 100 yards, We'll say 180 to 100 yards. I'm gonna say that the 300 blackout and the 6.5 Grendel are not gonna be any different at all. Now, when you go further than 100, a little bit, start stretching it out there. Of course, the better ballistic coefficient of the 6.5 Grendel is gonna start paying dividends. But I'm gonna say within 100 yards, I don't think you're gonna see much difference. And honestly, where I hunt, where I live, if you've got a 200 yard shot, you've got a bomb of a shot because we don't typically get that here in the hills of Kentucky because you've got so many, so many, so much wooded, thick wooded area. Plus, you know, if you're gonna have a two, 300 yard shot, that means you're probably shooting from a ridge top over a valley to another ridge top. That's just the way the terrain is here. So, the 300 blackout does very, very well. 6.5 Grendel does very, very well here where we hunt. Like, I don't need 300 Win Mag or 338 Lapua or anything like that to deer hunt around here. The short cartridges, medium, medium power cartridges do very well. But I mean, 300 blackout, like I said, a lot of people hate it. And I don't, I don't really get that because I don't know of another cartridge that's more versatile than the 300 blackout that goes in an AR-15 platform. Maybe you do, I don't know. 
and I can't think of it. I mean, the brass now is very plentiful for factory 300 blackout brass, but even if it's not, 5.56 five, brass is, and you can make 300 blackout brass from 5.56 five, brass. You know, it's, it's, to me, I think the brass is plentiful, bullets are plentiful, doesn't use much powder. You can get anything from wild light, light loads screaming to subsonic 220 grainers. That's pretty versatile in my opinion. And there's a lot you can do with these cartridges. You can deer hunt with it. I mean, like I said, a seven and a half inch barrel with a suppressor on it and some subsonic loads up close in your house, home defense. That's hard to beat, really. I mean, if, you, if you're a suppressor guy and you got a short barrel suppressor, these things are great for that. Also, another point is 300 Blackout doesn't use rifle powders. It uses Magnum pistol powders, like Little Gun, that I'm using right now, H110. You know, it's your typical revolver Magnum powders is what this uses. So what does that mean, you say? Well, I've got some earlier videos kind of demonstrating this, but it means that this round doesn't suffer near as much when you shorten the barrel. A 5.56 is going to lose a lot more velocity per inch of barrel loss than the 300 blackout because the powders that are used for 300 blackout have a much faster burn rate. So that means it doesn't need as much barrel to get that peak pressure. Whereas rifle powder, such as H335, which is a very popular powder, four, five, five, six, Varget, stuff like that, is going to burn much slower. Well, I say much slower, but a significant amount slower. So the barrel length has a greater impact on your velocity with that type of powder. I know 10 and a half inch barrel is great for 300 blackout, and you really don't lose much velocity between 10 and a half and 16 inch barrels. You lose some, don't get me wrong, you will lose some, but you don't lose a whole, whole lot. I actually had a comment or mention about that Hornady Sub X on one of my other videos saying that he had he had done some chrono work with the Hornady Sub X factory ammunition. And I don't remember if he said it was a seven and a half or 10 inch barrel, something like that. It was a shorter barrel, had higher velocities than a 16 inch barrel. The only way that would be possible is if your burn rate was so fast in that cartridge that it hit peak pressure and then the pressure started dropping before the bullet exited the barrel and the bullet drag in the barrel would slow the bullet down. And it's plausible. It's plausible that happens. I mean, that can happen. I've seen the studies done on 308 barrel length. They started with some crazy barrel length, like 40 inches or something. And that was demonstrated with that. The super long barrel did produce less velocity than a shorter barrel in that case. So it's plausible and it all has to do with your burn rates. And I like that it uses the Magnum powders like that because you still get good velocities on the top end with light bullets and you shorten the barrel. You're still going to have those good velocities. So I, I'll prefer that. Matter of fact, I don't like short barrel 5.56 rifles at all. I have a 10 and a half inch 5.56 and I hate it. It's just it muzzle blast right in your face, just pow, 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 just constant in your face. And the velocity loss in it, at that point, you're you're losing quite a bit. And 5.56 five, is a very velocity dependent cartridge for terminal performance. But 300 blackout, even the 110 grain bullets are still twice as heavy as your typical five. 55 grain 556. Five, so think about that. Your M193 ammunition with 55 grain full metal jacket loads are half the weight of what I consider light for caliber in 300 blackout. So just thoughts to ponder on. I mean, you don't have to love the cartridge. I'm not saying everybody has to love it. I'm just saying. It does bring something to the table somewhere where you could probably use it. And for those that just hate it just because they want to hate it, quit being the Nickelback guys, man. It's not cool to hate Nickelback anymore. We know they had some bangers. It's not cool to hate 300 Blackout just to hate 300 Blackout. I promise nobody, nobody in the forums is going to see you talk crap about 300 Blackout and be like, that guy's cool. He hates 300 Blackout. Mm, he's so cool.
it's not gonna happen <laughs> but anyways i just wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit here because i really enjoy the cartridge and i know it gets a lot of a lot of haters but i don't understand why maybe y'all can tell me why and somebody will probably say what's the answer to a question that was never asked that's the way most cartridges are developed honestly i don't know anybody who asked for specific cartridges maybe six five uh creedmoor i think that one was starting to be cried for when it was a wildcat for long range shooters were crying for that one i believe but I mean, really, typically, cartridges that come along, nobody asks for them. That's just what the designer came up with. But, anyways, that's what I got for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit my sponsors down below. It helps my channel out just to go click around. Target Sports link down there. Click on that one. Helps me out. Let's them know that I'm getting some views going that way, and they'll continue to be my sponsor. So, make sure you all help me out there where you can, and I appreciate you guys. Till next time, stay tuned.